Uh, this is the January 2020 exam, quest, uh, Solid Mechanics and FEA, uh, question two, part two, uh, and it's about um, a composite material made up of um, some aluminium plates and a brass core, and they're supporting a force. Uh, if you want, you could take a screenshot of this question, because I'm about to move it out of the way. Okay, so uh, question uh, two, part two. First of all, it's just worth drawing the diagram. We've got some parallel blocks like that. And there's this plate on top and a plate on the bottom. That's just kind of to say that the force is evenly distributed between these three parallel blocks. Um, so there's a force acting, and that force is 450 kilonewtons. Uh, sorry, it's gone off the top of the screen a bit and out of focus a bit. I guess it all... Yeah, there we go. Uh, come back into focus. Um, and... Um, we're told some other information. Uh, this is 40 millimeters, that's 0 0.04 meters, and these two are both uh, 10 millimeters, that's 0 0.01 meters. Uh, so we've got the dimensions, and the whole thing is three-dimensional, and this is 0 0.06 meters into the page. So it's uh, the whole block makes up a square. Uh, and finally, uh, we're told it's 300 millimeters high, 0 0.3 meters, and we're given some... Uh, information about the materials. The shaded material is aluminium and Young's modulus there is 70 gigapascals I think and the unshaded material in the way I've drawn it in the middle is brass and the Young's modulus is 105 gigapascals. So there's the information from the question uh, that I see as useful. Um, and now we're ready to make a start. The way to do all of these questions about um, loading that's supported by two different materials is first of all you have a load condition which says uh, that the force in the uh, aluminium plus the force in the brass must equal 450 times 10 to the 3 uh, newtons. And um, it's worth noting there, when I talk about the force in the aluminium, I mean the total force in the aluminium, and that's spread over two blocks of aluminium. So we'll need to pay attention to that. And then what you have is um, a compatibility condition. Compatibility, if I can spell. Don't worry, uh, don't, nobody will, mismark you, will mark you down for misspelling compatibility in the exam, as I've just done, um, but I think it's something like that. And then the compatibility condition says that the strain in the aluminium must equal the strain in the brass. That is, because these top and bottom plates are flat and they stay flat, if the brass gets compressed, the aluminium must also get compressed um, by the same amount. So now we can start to, to look at what all of this means, and it's just worth noting down some equations. We're going to use stress is force over area, strain is 
change in length divided by original length. I'm not sure we'll need that, but we will need that stress is Young's modulus times strain. Uh, and I'm going to start numbering my equations so that we know which ones we're referring to later. So I'll call that equation one and that equation two. Um, and if we take equation two and use the definition of strain, we can rewrite it as the strain in the aluminium divided by the Young's modulus for aluminium must equal the strain in the brass divided by the Young's modulus for brass. I might just start using B as a subscript for brass rather than keep on writing out a whole lot. So that's this equation here rewritten uh, using the definitions of stress and strain because what I want to do is move towards writing this in terms of forces so that I can substitute something into my load condition and then I'll only have one unknown in my load condition. Um, so substituting stresses for forces uh, we can say force in the aluminium divided by the area of the aluminium times the young mod Young's modulus of the aluminium equals force in the brass. I've changed my subscript just to B to save myself some writing. Divided by the area of the brass times the Young's modulus of the brass. Um, it might be helpful now just to put in some numbers because, in fact, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is say the force in the aluminium equals the force in the brass multiplied by area of aluminium, Young's modulus of aluminium, divided by area of brass, Young's modulus of brass. Uh, and I think that is going to help me because now I can substitute out the force in the aluminium in this original load condition. So that gives me um, the, going back to the load condition there, the force in the brass multiplied by area of aluminium, Young's modulus of aluminium over area of brass, Young's modulus of brass, plus the force in the brass equals 450 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Sorry, get that onto the page so you can see what I'm writing. Um, and then uh, now I know all of these numbers here. So I'm going to start putting them in. The area of the aluminium, I mentioned earlier, we need to make sure we use total area. So that's 0 0.02 multiplied by 0 0.06 multiplied by Young's modulus of aluminium, which is 70 times 10 to the 9, divided by area of the brass, that's 0 0.04 times 0 0.06 multiplied by 105 times 10 to the 9 plus FB equals 450 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And now we're pretty close. This thing in brackets, um, I could sort of simplify it. This is double that and this is one and a half times that. So I guess it's going to be a third, but let's just put it all into a calculator to make sure. 0 0.02 times 0 0.06 times 70E9 equals divided by 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.06 divided by 105E9 equals and it is indeed a third um, so this is FB times 1 over 3 plus FB equals 450 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Uh, 4 thirds FB equals 450 times 10 to the 3 newtons. FB equals 3 over 4 times 450 times 10 to the 3, which equals... Th 
337.5 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Um, now I can use FAL, this is equation 1 all over again, FAL plus FB equals 450 times 10 to the 3. So FAL equals 450 times 10 to the 3 minus 337.5 times 10 to the 3, which equals... One one two point five times ten to the three newtons. So we've got the force in the brass and the force in the aluminium. Um, it kind of makes some sense overall. There's more brass, and the brass is a slightly stronger material, so it ends up taking more of the force. And the aluminium takes slightly less. These numbers don't seem um, particularly um, out of place to me. And now finally what we need to answer the question, maybe I'll just change colour to uh, finish the question. Stress in the brass is force in the brass divided by area in the brass, which is 337.5 times 10 to the 3 divided by 0 0.04 times 0 0.06, which equals... One hundred and forty point six megapascals. I'm going to call that one four one megapascals, and the stress in the aluminium is the force in the aluminium divided by the area of the aluminium, which is one one two point five times ten to the three divided by naught point naught four. Sorry, naught point naught two times naught point naught six. which is 93.75, I'm going to call that 94 megapascals. And those are my final answers for that question. Uh, better just go back and check that I've answered what I was asked. Um, determine the normal stress in the brass core and the aluminium plates. So the normal stress in the brass core I think is 141 megapascals and the normal stress in the brass plates I think is 94 megapascals. And that's that question done.